Today I want to talk to you with Elena about her new custom droid for her new Mandalorian costume. Longtime viewers of my channel will know that I like to talk about details, small ones, big ones, adding to your costume to, to add depth of character and items. So today I wanted to bring Elena on to talk about her add-on to her new Mandalorian costume, which is her new droid. So I've been a member of the Mandalorian Mercs Costume Club for a number of years now, uh, and recently I decided to retire my, uh, my first costume, which was a teal Mandalorian. I fell in love with a stalker helmet, and that became the inspiration for my new costume. As I've kind of gone through my costume, I realized that I wanted to add more to it, and one of the things that I wanted to add was, uh, was a droid. Um, I've always loved robots, and so now this is kind of giving me a chance to make something that does fit in with Star Wars canon. Now, while I've been on kind of going through Thingiverse, I've managed to find a droid which I really, really liked, and I thought would fit in well with my, with my theme for my new Mandalorian. And what I decided to go with was a Seeker droid, which is the ID-10, uh, previously seen in Battlefront 2, and the Seventh Sister Inquisitor in uh, Star Wars Rebels. What is really cool about being able to 3D print my own robot, my own droid, is that I can make it look however I want and make it do whatever I want. Um, so I decided to have a droid that fits onto my shoulder of my costume and that I would like to be able to have lights and I'd like it to be able to move. So with those kind of ideas in mind, I did choose the Seeker droid and, um, and got to printing it. So this is actually the initial kind of uh, upper body portion of the droid, which I printed on my CR-10S, uh, which is my workhorse. So when I printed it, I printed it just at uh, normal size, so 100%. It did fit all in one piece on the bed, which is why I love that printer. I did find that it went together really well. Um, as always, the biggest um, kind of hurdle with finishing a 3D print is actually doing all the sanding and filling and and making sure that your details maintain their crispness, which is really important to me. For me, one of the hardest things when looking at doing a droid like this is trying to figure out what you want to look like at the end. Uh, there's a lot of, um, the, the ID droid that was in Star Wars Rebels was black and red, which is a very standard Imperial thing. And in Battlefront was a yellow and a gray one, uh, from what I recall. So Elena had a lot of fun trying to figure out what colors, what style, how it was gonna match her outfit, and, and all that kind of stuff. The one thing that the file did not have, uh, which I really wanted it to be included, was I wanted it to give it, have it have lenses. Um, so what Justin did is I actually gave him the measurements of all of the points that had would have lenses in them, which is this front one here, obviously with the bottom to it as well, both of these up here, and this small one here. He 3D modeled the uh, the domes that we were going to have on them, and we resin printed them on the any cubic printer which we have. Yeah, using the clear resin has actually been it's something I, I briefly played with prior to uh, my day job, and using it here was really great because it ended up being almost glassy almost immediately. But after some sanding and some prep work, you're actually able to custom tint them to be a different color uh, instead of having like a, a solid uh, print of know white or whatever you could have printed normally with this measure which would have just given a very uh, dull look this allowed it to give it a, a truly glass finish to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's my droid here as you can see we've got the the lights the LED lights that I've wired up and then have the uh, the resin domes over top as well and those are just glued in afterwards you can also see the custom paint scheme she gave her droid, including scratching in her name in Mandoa, to give that kind of... My Mandalorian Merc form name in Mandoa, yeah. It gives it a kind of little customization to it, uh, like it's her own ownership to it. Yep. Uh, all the legs are attached using Chicago screws, that means so that they can still, they can still bend and move. Um, I decided to go with the Chicago screws versus the um, little 3D printed parts just because I felt like these would be a little bit more durable. Uh, I can take them apart, put them back together a little bit easier than I would be able to if they were the 3D printed parts. Um, all of this was printed with a 40% infill, which makes it 
have like a little bit of heft to it, but it, overall it's not bad. And then Elena did, did want to take it one little step further. Having this draped light is pretty cool. You can put it on your shoulder, and that's what she's planning to do, mounting it when she's wearing her Mandalorian and walking around the conventions and whatnot. However, she wanted to give it a little bit of something extra, and she's going to show, show that right here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And it's a puppet. So I've always really liked puppets, not as much as I've liked robots, but... I wanted to be able to kind of incorporate that in. Now, what I did is I researched cable puppets, which, as you can see right here, it isn't attached into my bracer as it will be when I'm actually wearing my Mandalorian. But um, as soon as you pull the cable, it makes the head spin, which is really neat. No. Yeah, the mechanism inside it took, took a little trial and error, but uh, <laughs> it, it came together really well. It, it did take some trial and error. It does have um, a couple of springs inside, and um, we did take the did take apart a lazy Susan and used the, the center mechanism for that as well to be able to put it in there to give them a nice um, rotation, a smooth rotation. One other thing that I did add into my little robot here is I used um, springs from a clothespin to be able to actually hold onto my finger or a prop or a card or whatever it is. But I wanted to kind of be able to have him hold things. So I just put those little springs in and... So there we go. If you guys have any questions about this, please ask us in the comments below. We'll answer them. If you want to follow Elena on social media, you can reach her at... Um, Maker Etc. On, on Instagram, and I am Garden Geek on the Mandalorian Works forum. Yeah, so feel free to, to give her a follow, and if you, like I said, if you have any questions, ask us below. So again, thank you for watching, subscribing, and liking, and uh, we'll see you next time.